today we're looking at medians and altitudes of triangles. These are also points of concurrency. Remember we talked about concurrency in our last video. Concurrency are when you have three lines and they all intersect in the same point. And the point where they all intersect is called the point of concurrency. Now let's talk about median. The median of a triangle is the segment from the vertex of any point in the triangle to the opposite side and that point hits right in the middle of the opposite side so that both sides, pieces on both sides of that point where it intersects are congruent. Now there's a special property with centroids. If you take the median of any one of these angles of the triangle, it is going to be broken up in two thirds and one third. So the longer side is two thirds of the whole thing and the shorter side is one third. So I have AP is two thirds of AY and PY would be one third of AY. This happens with all of the sides of the triangles. This point of concurrency is called the centroid and the centroid is also the center of gravity of a triangle. Let's go ahead and do some examples of this. If I have PZ and it's two, that's the short side. That's one third of the whole length of the triangle. BP would be two thirds. That's gonna be twice as much as two. So we times the two by four. Four plus two gives us six for the BZ. If I look at XC, equals 18, that whole side of the triangle is 18. So we're gonna take that and divide it in three. If I divide 18 by three, I get six. That would be the short side. The long side is going to be twice that, which is 12. So XP would be six and PC would be 12. The next side we have AP is seven. That is the long side of the triangle. So we're going to cut it in half for the short side. Three and a half would be the short side. If I take seven plus 3.5, I get 10.5 for the, the whole entire AY. So PY would be 3.5 and AY would be 10.5. Let's look at example two. If UT equals 15, we're finding UX, the whole thing is 15. What I wanna do is divide that by three and I get five for the short side. So the long side would be 10. So UX would be five and XT would be 10. Looking at R, if RX equals six, then that's the long side. I cut that in half for the short side. So three XV would be three and RV would be the entire thing. RV would be nine. Looking at the last side of the triangle, if XW is four, that's the short side. That's one third. Two thirds would be twice as much. So four would be XW, SX would be eight, and SW would be 12. Example three, we are finding the centroid of triangle RST. Now it's given us three vertices. We're gonna go ahead and plot those points. We have a point at two, one. We have one at five, eight, over five, up eight and we have one at eight, three. So we're going over eight, up three. Now, since we're finding the centroid, we're finding the midpoint of the sides and connecting to the opposite vertices. Now, we just learned about midpoint. We add the X's and divide by two. We add the Y's and divide by two. And that will give us a point that's right in the center of two points. Now the first midpoint I'm finding is the midpoint between 2, 1 and 8, 3. If I add 8 plus 2 is 10 and I divide that by 2, I get 5. 
3 plus 1 is 4. Divide that by 2, I get 2. So if I plot the point 5, 2, I get this green point right at the bottom of my triangle. And then I connect it to the top vertex, and that will be right in the middle. Notice it goes over 3, up 1, and then over 3, up 1 again. So it's right in the center of those two points. Next, we're going to find the midpoint of 2, 1, and 5, 8. We add the x's. 5 plus 2 is 7, and we divide that by 2. It's 3 and a half. 8 plus 1 is 9, divide by 2 is 4 and a half. So from the origin, we go over 3 and a half and up 4 and a half. Then we connect it to the opposite vertex. Now it will be in the middle of our side of our, our th third side there. Now let's do the last one. We're going to find the midpoint between 5, 8 and 8, 3. When we do that, we get the point six and a half, five and a half. And we don't really need that third one because they're all gonna intersect at the same point. If we count that point up, we get the point five, four for the centroid of our triangle. The third one that we're going to use is our altitudes. Altitudes are a perpendicular side from the vertex to the opposite side. Now, this is going to be called the orthocenter. I like to think of ortho like orthodontists. Orthodontists like to make our teeth straight and at 90 degree angles. So if we take the vertex and make a 90 degree angle with the opposite side, that is, would be the orthocenter. Acute triangles, they all of their orthocenters are on the inside of the triangle. Right triangles, orthocenters are on the triangle. And obtuse triangles, the orthocenter is outside of the triangle. So on example four, we're gonna use what we know about orthocenters to find them on this triangle. We're gonna plot the three vertices. So we have negative six, six, we have negative six, negative four, and we have positive five, negative four. We draw a right triangle. So right triangles make a perpendicular line on that triangle. Now, since it is right, if I take that top angle, it makes a right triangle with that third vertex. And the same thing happens on my other. Now, if I were to make a right, right angle, to the hypotenuse, it's still going to line up at that right angle at negative six, negative four. Now we've learned four types of concurrencies points. The circumcenter makes a circle around the outside vertices. The incenter makes a circle on the inside of the circle with the perpendicular bisectors. The third type is the centroid that is made with the medians of all the triangles. A median is where we find a line between the vertex and the opposite middle of the sides. The orthocenter is found by doing altitudes. That is a perpendicular line between the vertex and the opposite side. It doesn't have to be in the middle. So remember, orthodontics make, dentists make your teeth straight. They make it have right angles. Centroid, it's the center of the opposite side. So that's the ways that you can remember how to find which one is which. So the circumcenter, the property is it's equidistant from the vertices. That's why we have the circle. And the in center, it's equidistant from the sides, which is why we have a circle inside. The centroid is the two-third, one-third. Um, it's also your center of gravity. And there's not really a whole lot of properties on the orthocenter.